Timbo, you shut your mouth when you're talking to me. That's because we're talking about bite. We're talking about grip and the effect that has on your strength with DJ from Strong Camps. Um, this one is going to, if you're not, if you're not down with like, thinking outside of the box and trying some a bit a few crazy different things then um then this isn't one to listen to but if you want to try and find a little bit of nugget of something that's going to add a little bit to your training that could be as simple as just biting down whilst you're doing your favorite exercise and you're going to be stronger uh, and it's that simple then listen on uh, because you're in for a little treat i feel like we maybe need to do a little waiver on this one and go i would recommend before maximal effort biting, that you go out, you go out and do as DJ says and get a mouth guard <laughs> or a gum shield or something. What I don't want, Jacko, is lots of emails coming in going, I tried that thing and fractured my tooth. <laughs> it's and, a big disclaimer. Gonna, I'll, I'll send you my dentistry bill. So take it steady, people. Be sensible. Get a gum shield, maybe, if, you, if you're going to go and like, if, you, if you're the sort of person, type A, who listens to this sort of stuff and goes like, all in. Like, I'm gonna, <laughs> tomorrow I'm going to do a one RM. Let's just go steady, people. Um, There's some interesting interesting thoughts to play around with. The information provided in this podcast is in no way meant to be uh, <laughs> yeah. legally binding or medical firm. If you do seek your medical professional before you're traveling out, anything is a school car sense expects no responsibility for any of the extras you follow on, <laughs> on your teeth when biting down hard or whether you're not biting down hard. But Dentists so are not cheap. Hard. That's one thing I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, enjoy this one. It's a really interesting conversation. And, again, something really pretty simple, I think. You know, if you go in, in you deep into a workout, just sometimes having – a little bit of something available to you to to, to deepen the resources at your disposal. Um, I'm definitely going to remember this one when I'm hanging out my backside at CrossFit next time. <laughs> I need to pick up something heavy. <laughs> so sit back, relax, and enjoy DJ from Strong Camps on the Movement, Strength, and Play podcast. Roll that jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. Welcome to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast, DJ. How are you doing? I'm great. Jacko and Tim, thanks for having me on. No, our pleasure. We're going to give you the people that give you the chance to just sort of introduce yourself a little bit. But I want to just set the scene of like... A friend of mine, um, shout out to Sarah Moore. Um, on the she'd she'd like tagged me in a post or, or you know sent a post of like, look at this, and there was like you talking about people doing pull ups and then retesting them the following day. I think it was, and there was like biting a resistance band with a kettlebell attached to it or something fairly crazy like that, and um, and then instantly being able to do more um, pull ups, and it was like what's this about and we'd come across some stuff um a couple of years ago from the guys at the national circus that were talking about like jaw position and tongue position in in strength testing um and i remember watching the world's strongest man um list this last year and everyone had like a like a gum shield type thing and that they were biting them and then they were doing some heavy lifts and i was like I was like, Timbo, like, we need to speak to DJ because he's doing some crazy stuff, man. Like, um, and there's, there's, there's obviously something going on here. Just um, that's me setting the scene for the listeners of where this is coming from. But um, what, what, where, where is, where has this come from for you? You must have an incredible story to like. Wait, you don't just start just picking stuff up with your mouth as the first thing you do in the gym. Like, you must have done a, quite a bit of stuff in the build up to this. Like, give us the background. Oh, I've always. Uh like to use my mouth for things and my mom used to yell at me but uh yeah how i first got kind of interested in it was the old school strongmen so the um teeth lifting was a popular feat of strength so you would um have a, a strap attached to a dumbbell some sort of weight other people and lift it up off the ground so that's kind of where I was like, oh, cool feet of strength. Uh, also okay. in the Cirque culture, uh, the iron jaw performance is where people would bite onto a strap and they would be hoisted up. So it's kind of an aerial uh, feat. Right. And they'd go up in the air, spin around. They would also hold other people and have that uh, bite grip. So that's been around since for a long time. I know 1800s, uh, there's some drawings of it happening. 
so yeah, but the strong man is where I looked into it. So I would, I would do it. And then, you know, I saw, I saw a post, you know, someone replied to one of mine when I was lifting some weight and I was thinking, you know, I could use this for neck training because for me, it feels better than the harness that you put around the head. And when I would share it, people would uh, give me a lot of feedback like, man, I used to have neck pain trying to do like bridging or harness network, yeah. neck work, but the um, anchoring it from the mouth and pulling weight was a different experience, positive experience, didn't have any of the discomfort. So I'm like, cool, this is a, maybe an alternative to neck strength for people. Yeah. But yeah, with the band and the pull up, that was where it got really interesting where I kind of started going the, down the rabbit hole was anchoring the bite and the jaw and putting the other side of the band around the feet gave you this really uh, tied in like midline feedback and stability throughout the chain. And so when I first tested it, pulling up, uh, shout out to uh, the late Chris Daly was the one who kind of came up with this idea. Um, but it's almost like I flew up in the air <laughs> and it threw me off on the first one. It was like I was floating. So I was like, what's going on here? I got to share this with people. So we got a big group together. I think over 25 people had them test, you know, just max out strict pull-ups and then use that bite grip with the band on the next day. And same thing reported, uh, less effort. They felt lighter. Um, they were getting higher on the bar, more range of motion. And, they were getting more reps and then we tested it with push-ups same thing uh reporting more reps with that so, so the band is around your feet yeah, when you look one end the and then ra and then in the mouth yeah. on the other so i i feel like i'd seen one with a kettlebell but anyway but, but anyway don't, yeah yeah i mean it, it's similar because it's it's anchoring the jaw down um i found it better even with a band but yeah, with hanging weight off there, you get a similar um, experience. It's kind of harder with some movements because it will swing and go off the body. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there's something about that anchoring of the jaw through the rest of the uh, through the spine, rest of the body up top. And we're talking quite a light band, right? We're not we're not talking anything super. If it's going around, in my sense, it's going through the in the, through the mouth or in through between the teeth and then around the feet. And we're doing pull-ups. Have I got that right in my mind? Yeah, light band. Maybe that okay, like light 20 band, pounds. Super light. Yeah. Okay. So some some tension where you're working against it still, though. Uh, enough to give you feedback, to feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, so what's the... So as you said, you went down the, down the rabbit hole, DJ. What's the... Uh, what did you find down there in terms of... Have you dived into kind of like what, what's actually happening from a system perspective? Because uh, this will sound like for, for a lot of people, this will be... <laughs> Kind of they won't have heard or, or seen anything like this before. So um, we've also had Carl, um, Cole Clayton on, who's a cranial osteopath, and he talked in his base in Byron Bay in, in Australia. But he's, he also kind of a, a, an aware, made us more aware to this, the importance of tongue position and jaw position around just movement and function. And um, it, there seems to be some really interesting sort of emerging science around this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's something we naturally do when we lift heavy things. A lot of people will clench their jaw. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, in Olympic lifting or jumping, uh, explosive things, you'll see people maximally like open their mouth up wide. So the jaw is really just uh, related to movement in general, and it's a way to access tension. So what's interesting is when you look at intentionally clenching your jaw, um, bunch of studies reporting higher force output when they're testing grip strength um squats these other things so that's interesting yeah. um also interesting is uh so cap is concurrent activation potentiation so that's this phenomena of okay i'm going to um have a remote voluntary contraction you know distal to the prime mover that i'm focusing on so an example would be if i'm going to uh shake your hand and then I brace my core, I might be able to have more output into my hand strength. Or if I'm going to push something away with my legs and I squeeze my fist, you know, I'm driving more tension. Maybe I could get more. 
force output. So the Valsalva maneuver is kind of similar to that. But the jaw is actually one of the best um, CAP strategies using tension through the jaw. Right. And so, yeah, that's been studied. So clenching is going to improve output and opening and the theory behind this so kind of what they proposed is what's happening is this cortical overflow so meaning in your motor cortex you have uh, this movement designated for this part of the body and when you do these clenching or squeezing uh, there's a cortical overflow so activity is overflowing into other areas and there's some sort of like functional synergy that's amplifying uh, the output and for me, that makes me think, okay, so if it's certain um, locations in the brain which are getting the overflow, maybe we're seeing some strategies more beneficial than others. Um, and I've kind of found just the pattern I've seen is when it comes to this explosive jumping um, movement like what we see in uh, Olympic weightlifting or that, that third pole, the mouth opening seems to be the emergent strategy that we, that comes up when it comes to deadlifting, uh, clenching seems to be the strategy that comes up, which, you know, carrying deadlifting, pulling strong man, <laughs> you really want to clench on all these type of movements, yeah. right? Uh, on another sport, you know, where you're doing like vertical jumps, basketball or something, maybe, you want to use more of an opening in certain uh, contexts. Could there be a relationship but with yeah, like... another thing... Okay, no, you go, you go. I'll come back to that. You, you go. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'll just, I was just went, we've know, had Dr. So. Dr. Cobb from Z Health Performance on, um, talking a lot about like neurology and, and how that affects things. And the the widening compared to the clenching, I'm just wondering if there's any like flexor flexor extensor tone changes happening where when we're opening the mouth hard out is it like forcing like um extension tone potentially more and that's helping with like a triple extension and the flexion is more the maybe that's helping more with the grip because there was some other stuff around like i remember uh talking about like uh aggressively pushing your head forward into your hand like st- tends to like facilitate flexor tone of through the body and, and pushing strongly back with the neck so obviously these there's things that are all connected within this and it's just, yeah, I just keep finding it more and more fascinating. Is there, is there any potential sort of truth in that? Is that something that's come out in theories? I mean, there's no literature on it or studies, but that's what I personally see, see it through that lens is I'm finding okay. that for how I'm describing it is internal torque, uh, or you could say flexion base. Yeah. Is, is more for the clenching and that band anchoring which is tying in that midline and the opposite, the opening is going to bias external torque or extension. So, yeah. And that's why I think it's cool. And that's why it differentiates from the idea of like a radiation, which is very like unidimensional, just kind of compress is okay. Now we have different strategies of tension to bias what we intend to do. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. If you, I was just thinking about it yeah, practically, right, yeah. if you were going to pick up something heavy, you would you wouldn't you wouldn't do that with a mouth wide open. You would clench <laughs> down to do that. But if I'm going to try and go up and extend, you wouldn't you wouldn't try and jump the highest you ever jumped with your mouth biting down hard. I, I don't, like naturally, that if yeah. you didn't think about it, I think that's you would you would opt for that strategy. So we're sort of basically talking about just optimizing what people would probably do naturally, but utilizing it for. A specific kind of performance outcome so what does it look like from a training perspective dj so there'll be some people in the gym that'll be listening to this and um they'll be going right well i want to go and sort of like to, to try and use some of this um this information how how do we how can you go about sort of optimizing it in a safe and progressive way yeah so you could try it right away by clenching your teeth and if you want to be a little more safe about it you can get a mouthpiece um You'll see a lot of people use like performance mouthpieces, but studies have shown you can just get a cheap boil and bite mouthpiece. (laughs) It's just about the clenching, which is you're getting the benefit, you know. Um, Is there any issues if someone's bite is off? You know, like um, 
I mean, I fractured my cheekbone and had a head injury. Like my bite, when, when I'm in the dentist, the dentist goes, bite down. How does that feel? I'm like, it feels crap because my fifth infant, like, is it, is there any issues around, around that compared to if, if someone's nicely um, aligned? Yeah, in the studies, uh, the occlusion, so the two things that are affected is the amount of force you're using and the position of the bite. So yeah, if you have like malocclusion or your bite's off, overbite, underbite, you're going to have less output in general in strength, uh, they found. Uh, there's so my that one, but Yeah, but uh, as far as how do you <laughs> fix that, it's like... The people say like jaw will affect the rest of your posture in your body, but also the posture of your body will affect your jaw. So there's kind of that, um, we don't know where the causal direction is, but yeah. you can go to, you know, they have, uh, uh, oral facial, like myofunctional dentistry and people who kind of deal with that kind of stuff with hardware and train the bite. There's the <laughs> mewing crowd who talk about training with the tongue yes. position. And, and chew, you know, yeah, that's yeah, another yeah. cool thing with the band bite that we're seeing is because it's placed over the tongue, when you're pressing it up against the roof of the mouth, we're pretty much doing loaded resisted mewing. <laughs> and you'll fatigue really quick and feel those muscles worth thing. So it's a So you have the way. band, you have the tongue keeping the band up? Yeah. yeah. Right. I was just thinking so we're adding, we're adding the tongue in there and it's in the perfect nice. spot. Yeah. So, so give us an example then, DJ, in terms of like exercises that I'm trying to visualize what this looks like in the gym in a, in a practical day-to-day -day training session. Someone's going to go in, they've got a, a normal strength training set. Um, give us some examples of, of what it might look like. Sure. Once again, something you could do right away. If you're doing something, I would classify as like internal torque or almost any bodybuilding movement. You know, if you're benching dumbbells. Folk, just focus on clenching your teeth maximally. Mm. And once again, if you use a mouthpiece, it's probably a little safer. I'll put a towel in my mouth, you know, do it just to give me some okay. feedback to press against. But ju that's it. Just clench that's maximally. Every Amazing. set, clench, go, clench, go. Yeah. Easy one right there. So you, uh, if you, you want to add, old... if you're doing like, sorry, go ahead. Okay, get, we used to have those old, you say, boil and bite mouth guards. That's what we used to play rugby with back in the day. The five, it used to be a five pounds, but they're not five pounds anymore. But you, you burn the roof of your mouth because you put it in too <laughs> fast and you have to like, and mold it for a bit. Or just get one of those and just pop it in when you. So, and this is maximal strength type work. And would you, would you do it for like lower intensity sessions as well? So, you say you're doing more hypertrophy reps, you know, eight, 10 rep ranges, something like that. Or would you, is it something that typically works better when you're going to go like one to five rep maxes? Yeah, so in the studies, the, it works well for uh, maximum uh, effort yeah. sets. So you also want to use maximum effort clenching. So they showed mm. sub-maximal clenching will produce sub-maximal results. So, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. But we found that the anchoring the jaw, which is it's about the bite, but it's more about um, the rest of the system. That for longer sets, for endurance work, I mean – going like past 20 to 30 reps mm. uh we found that really beneficial using the the band anchoring nice could you effectively get a mouth guard <laughs> could you effectively um do the banded anchoring um with any exercise so long as you can figure out a way to sort of have the band around your foot and and creating some midline up at tension up until the jaw like if would the in theory work on anything um we found it mostly for internal torque sagittal plane movements it okay. works the best so something like that extension bias thing like explosive ballistic movements maybe not um mm. it's hard to test because even on the pull-ups, if you bend your knees or, or create slack in the band, you're not going to have the same effect. You have yeah. to have that stiff, straight body. Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe we, there's a device you can create and strap around the body that would create the same effect. That would be interesting. Um, but I have a feeling just for the, the kind of flexion-based movements, 
uh, it works the best. Yeah. When we had the cold clay song, I'd heard this this freight, or someone said this a while ago, that you could actually sort of potentially question, I say, all strength training literature historically, because no strength training literature that we base a lot of our reps and sets around um, in our modern day training practices accounted for tongue position, and, and now we could probably throw in some mix bites or, or, or jaw clenching. So the variance and the potential um, performance results of somebody biting down and somebody not biting down potentially would be enough to cause enough variance to potentially suggest that um, the, <laughs> the strength training, the, do, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? Like the variation, if the, the, the grip that, that biting can cause could actually sort of change the outcomes of the strength performance in that research study. Does that make sense? It's, it's that significant, is yeah. I guess what we're saying. Well, I would say it's been pretty well studied. There's a lot of literature on that, and they, they've seen mm. improvement. Um, oh, and, and what I mean yeah, is like where they haven't accounted for for for, uh, for, 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 for tongue position or for, for the jaw clenching. So all oh, that studies right. where they've yeah. never really kind of included that as one of the, the parameters or one of the part of the methodology, you could potentially question the results of that literature review or that study because they haven't accommodated or accounted for this thing as you said it's well studied and also now well proven yeah it'd be interesting to see i mean just like i I mean when you look at any study you got to look at these are individuals what's their level (laughs) because i would like to think that just i mean these things are going to emerge at high levels anyways you know i i think uh professional elite powerlifters they're doing something with their neck face Mm. tongue and jaw probably unknowingly that's you know biased toward in a an optimal more optimal uh way of doing things i think it'll just emerge when you um go to a certain level but i think it's important to like look at these patterns and say hey can we implement them to shorten the learning curve and give them to people so they could access more potential right away. Mm. What do you spend the rest of your time doing, DJ, in terms of where, what's your, I'm interested in the rest of the context of, of your, your work and, and your training and, and coaching endeavors, those sorts of things. Man, yeah, well, I uh, live in the gym pretty much, but mm-hmm. the, <laughs> my, my interests um parenting uh training people uh some some reading and eating yeah, and what sleeping sort of, what, when you talk about training and spending your time <laughs> in the gym what sort of who do you train are you, are you in a specific area around powerlifting or 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 uh, okay. a different sort of type of training within that yeah so uh, i guess so most of my clients are online clients and these are a lot of trainers um uh, a lot of like, I guess, uh, unconventional trainers, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, but in in my gym, I have very like general pop um, clients with normal goals, which which I love to keep myself grounded mm-hmm. through that. Because if it doesn't work with your average everyday person, um, might not be practical yeah. to use. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the clientele awesome perfect well i think there's some really interesting stuff in there jacko for for people to go and it's, it's, it seems like a relatively simple um and and quite effective tool for people to have a play around with so i definitely think there'll be i will definitely be thinking about giving this a go next time i'm stepping up to a heavy bar yeah no for sure is there anything to add then from that like just the grip of the or just the jaw either clenching or opening around you already mentioned about neck strength and this was a way of actually initially coming seeing it as a training neck strength but i'm getting a better anchoring point of this like you know how many people train neck strength should everyone train neck strength i've come from a, a, a rugby background where they do do some neck strengthening work because some positions really require that um in, in the scrum and that type of stuff um it's never something i've really um looked at but probably personally quite interested in that when I, I had a head injury that was sort of ended my career when there was like a whiplashing in that and, and of, uh, a whiplashing effect and so like probably would benefit would have benefited back then and maybe would benefit now from some from some neck strengthening work and I'm wondering about is that something 
you know, is that something actually everyone would benefit from having a stronger neck because they can hold that better posture you were talking about? Um, does the spine feel more stable? Like what's, what's sort of, or is it just something you think is relevant for only a certain type of person, like a power lifter or something that that's requiring that extra sort of support? Well, I think it's a, it's a part of our bodies and I like every part of it to be as uh, strong as possible. And speaking of whiplash, I mean, after whiplash, a lot of cervical strength goes down and there's a lot of um, fear avoidance in the neck, especially. So I think yep. if this is something that people can do and access without discomfort, then yeah, I, th I think people will be amazed at how getting just the neck cervical region um, stronger kind of carries over to a lot more other things. And with that bite, anchor and grip, just the angles, like if you do it with a cable or band, you could set up really nice resistance profiles uh, doing it like that instead of just pulling down with a harness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important. Also, just like spinal training and movement, which a lot of people do from their hands, you know, loaded from their hands like a Jefferson curl or something. Loading it from the top yeah. of the spine, man, the experience you get in the, you know, load on the, once again, that mid-back cervical region, thoracic region, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a lot, lot of stimulus and adaptation and progressive load we could use there that I think has been left off the table for a while. So it is just... So would you, would you do something like a Jefferson curl rather than holding the weight, literally holding it in your mouth? Yeah, I would do both, mouth and hands. Yeah. Um, but the mouth definitely gives you uh, Interesting. more out of it. And, you know, just kind of like a spinal waving thing while anchoring yeah. the head through the mouth uh, is, man, it's a great experience. I've, I've had like doms in my core, like I was doing direct <laughs> ab work from just doing it with yeah. a cable. Yeah, it was interesting. And is it a lot of, is it a lot of, like extension or like like what are you is it just ever are you trying to focus are you a bit of everything what's so when i when i'm loading up um the head for like the spinal waves and i'm loading it up so it's pulling behind me and i'll try to keep my head fixed and anchored at one spot and move the spine around okay. it almost like it's closed yeah, chain no. um yeah and it's like whoa this is a very new sensation but Man, it lights up. You, you feel instant tension and contraction through uh, the right muscles to move your body into these positions. Yeah, it's, it's really good feedback. Awesome. DJ, I am playing with that. If people want to get a bit of a feel for this sort of stuff, they'd probably be able to see you in action. How could people go and find out more about you and, and uh, get a flavor for the things that you've explained to us today? Yeah, you could head to, I guess, my Instagram, at strongcamps. There's a, a link there. We have a, a link tree to a free webinar all about Great. kind of what we've found with the bite training. There's also a course where you could kind of see all the ways we use it, template for how you could incorporate it into your training. Uh, so all that's there on the Instagram. Perfect. Yeah. Check it out, guys It's and girls. It uh, comes highly recommended. It's uh, when, you're, when one of your videos pops up on my feed, it's always... Uh, I'm always excited to see what, what crazy things is he picking up with his mouth. <laughs> Here's too, Jacko. I mean, uh, always learning more about breathing, watching your stuff. Uh, oh, I didn't, uh, didn't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, DJ, thanks so much for coming on and uh, sharing some wisdom with us. We really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to connecting again. Cool. Thanks for having me on, guys. Now, Timbo, I don't know if this is a, another part of the disclaimer, um, but, well, one, I'm fascinated, but two... Um, I think I need to clean my resistance bands before I try <laughs> before I put one of those in my mouth. I, you know, I'm not afraid of like throwing the resistance band around a bit and maybe doing a bit on the grass and it gets a bit muddy. Maybe it's, that's also going to be good for my immune system because I'm going to get a few like bugs in there and I'm going to get, maybe there's another added bonus to it, but, um, put clean stuff in your mouth, people. That's what I'm saying. He said chains at one point. I was like, oh, crikey, this is levels to this. Interestingly though, levels to Naomi... Everything. My one-year-old, she must have cottoned on to this idea already <laughs> because she regularly pulls the resistance bands out of my gym bag and puts them in her mouth. And I'm like, stop it. They've been in the gym. They're dirty. And she's like, no, dad. Nah, she, she's Train like, him no. a draw. Get, 
<laughs> so what are you doing? Get my flexor tensors up. It's a nice um, jaw, Dad. Does it come in men's? You got a good jaw anyway. You <laughs> no, do, you've got, already done mate. that. I, and then... That is a thing actually. I need to be careful with this because it could. I could oh. look more like David Coulthard if I start. <laughs> you don't. You don't need any hypertrophy of that jawline. So I look like a guy off the top of my sh- <laughs> shoulders. I've got some work to go. I'm, yeah, I've got some work to do for me. This is this is going to be my yeah. new thing. Strong jaw. And jaw is bigger than uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> go, let's know you get on this one. Interesting one to go and play around with. And yeah, we hope you enjoyed it. Again, divergence in our conversations, bringing you some people doing some interesting things at the frontier of movement, strength, and play. And um, yeah, I'd be interested to see how how this one resonates. So get in touch if you've got any questions. As always, we like answering questions. I've got some people who actually have asked questions, Jacko. I've got one to hit you with, which is actually a really good one. Are we doing it in this outro or are we going to do it as a podcast? No, I'm teasing it. (laughs) It's social proof, right? So if people Uh, think that other people are asking questions, then they might also ask questions. And then that helps us with content. And we also quite like answering your questions. I look forward to you being question master then next time. Yeah, it's a good one. It's from our friend Wesley. Again. Ah, Wes, big up Wes. Yeah, he, he yeah you get a shout out question. when you put questions on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he gets his own podcast episode dedicated to his question. Right, thank you for listening. I hope you do have had a good week and let us know um, again if you would like to anything we to discuss on the on the strength and movement strength and play podcast. Get in touch. Let us know. Give us a five star review on your favorite listening platform. You can find everything that we do at schoolofcalisthenics.com. There's nothing else to say apart from keep exploring your physical potential through movement, strength and play. Class dismissed.